Okay, so I know we're all kind of locked in our houses right now, at least most of us are, unless you still have to go to work, because um, we're not supposed to be around each other. And that includes, you know, not just all of you guys, but I'm here at home with my kids too. So I'm coming to you guys from my basement. This is my workshop. We'll be doing some art projects in here in just a second. And joining me today is gonna be my son, Johnny. He's over here playing hockey. Johnny, are you ready to get started? Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's go in here. All right. So here we are from the workshop. So today, what we're gonna be doing, buddy, and everybody that's watching up there, yes. is we're going to be making a painting um, a and a drawing flower. of a sunflower. That's right. And this is something that most of, well, not most, but some of my students were already doing. Mm -hmm. I know my kindergartners at Coleraine were doing this. I know um, some of my students at CGA, third and fourth graders were doing something similar. We just got done talking about Vincent Van Gogh and we started making our own vase of sunflowers. Um, so this isn't all that different. So maybe this is something that your kids can do if you're sitting at home and you're wondering, what are my kids gonna do? Um, you know, I want them to still have that art and creative time. You can do your own thing or you can do this. I thought maybe it'd be good for them to see a familiar face and maybe find it entertaining, you know, to see what it's like at Mr. Vance's house. Um, so here we go. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start with a piece of paper to do some sketching because if we're going to draw a sunflower the first thing we need to figure out is how we're going to draw our petals okay um, everything that we're going to do today and tomorrow um, is all going to be done with you know supplies that i have around the house but there's nothing that we're doing here that you guys can't do at home with just pencils paper and crayons. These are oil pastels. If you have oil pastels, they're great. If you don't and you just have crayons, you can use crayons. If you have colored pencils, use colored pencils. If you have markers, use markers. Um, and you can just kind of follow along and do what we're doing. Um, but we're each gonna get a pencil. So there's your pencil, Johnny, okay? And here's my pencil, all right? And before we start to draw our sunflower, we need a little bit of practice drawing our petals because that seems to be, especially for my younger kids, this one of my older kids, some of the more difficult parts of this process. So I'm actually gonna just draw two lines on my paper. Johnny, can you draw two lines on your paper? One, two, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going along these lines and I'm just gonna practice different ways that I could draw the petals of a flower or a sunflower in this case. Now a real sunflower, we've got a picture of one right here pulled up on the iPad. Um, has petals that kind of start out round at the bottom and they come to a point at the end, but yours doesn't have to look like that. Maybe it's gonna be different. Um, so I'm gonna start out on my line here and I'm just gonna practice making different kinds of petals. Maybe I want a petal that's like a triangle or an upside down V. You think you can practice that one, buddy? Yeah, I can do it. Okay, let me see it. See if you can do it. Good, so that's the most basic kind of line we can make for our petal. Maybe we want our petals to be more curved. So we could practice making curved petals. Can you practice that, Johnny? Can you do a curved one? Very good. And it's important too while we do this to make sure that we make our petals big enough that we're able to color them in or paint them in later with whatever art materials we have. If you have something like colored pencils, you could get by with really tiny petals. Um, but if you've got something larger like oil pastels or maybe you're a little one that's working with watercolors, you're gonna to wanna to make bigger flower petals to give yourself more space to paint in later. It makes things a little easier down the road for us. All right, the next petal I'm gonna do is gonna be two curved lines and they're gonna to come to a point. This one's a little bit more challenging and this is a little bit more like a real sunflower petal. So I just made a line up and a line back. Do you think you can practice that one, buddy? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You can look at mine or you can look at the picture. Look at your paper too. Do your best. It's okay if they don't look perfect because we're just making art here. We want these all to be unique. They don't all have to be the same. Excellent job, good work, okay? Now, I want you to use the rest of the line here, okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing to practice which one of these petal types you wanna to use to draw the rest of your sunflower. And maybe you wanna add more details to it. Those of you out there, maybe you're a grown up or you're an older kid that wants to add some more detail or a teenager yeah or a teenager you can practice all different types of petals and just kind of play around with those on this line so that you know 
by the time you start your real drawing exactly what you want yours to look like. I'm going to make some that are wavy, maybe some that are really long and spiky. Oh, I can't. Okay. You can practice them too, buddy. Just pick which ones you want to try and draw. Practice. Be mine, buddy. All right, let me see. It's one that's getting blown by the wind. Ooh, I like that. Very wavy. All right, see if you can do three more. You can use this line too. I'm gonna look at mine and try to pick which one I wanna make. Go ahead. I'm gonna make one like a leaf, but on a flower. Okay, all right. That's kind of like this one right here, or that one. I like this one right here. I think I'm gonna use that one for my petals. See I'm what gonna, you got. I'm gonna use this one for mine. You're gonna have them be all wavy? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, that's fine. It's your sunflower. Okay, so if you can see, I sketched out some petals. I picked this kind. It's kind of a normal spiky petal with some wavy lines. Johnny, what'd you pick out? Tell them. A wavy flower petal. Yeah, because why? It's getting blown by the wind. Okay, all right, sounds good to me. Okay, so we're gonna set our sketches aside like this. All right. Okay, here we go, part two. We have discovered what kind of petals we want, and now we're gonna move on to our actual artwork. Now, we have really big paper here, okay? Um, you know, as an art teacher, I have a lot of art supplies laying around the house, um, so I'm able to use this stuff. You don't have to have big, thick paper like this. If you're using watercolors, it's preferable. Um, if you don't have watercolors, any kind of just thin notebook paper or printer paper will do. Even if you don't have something like this, just find something that's got something on the other side and you can draw on the back of it. Um, any, anything that's paper that's blank will work, no matter how big or how small. You could do this on a postcard if you wanted to and just make little tiny ones. Yes. Um, but we're working big. So here's Johnny's paper, all right? He's yes. got his flower petal practice sheet right there, all right? And I've got my paper here. Okay, let's set that over there. You got your pencil? Yeah. Okay, now you're gonna need to work with me because this is gonna kind of be drawing like a team here. All right, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna start out with. We're not gonna do our petals right off the bat because the very first thing we need to draw on our paper a is a circle, exactly. Two now, circles. Just, we're gonna do just one circle to start off, okay? Just one circle, buddy but we don't want this circle to be really tiny. We have this great big paper, okay? Don't draw small. You have all this space. We're making one flower on this paper, so we need to fill it up. Now, do you think that means that I need to make my circle so big that it takes up the whole entire paper? No. No, uh-uh. Do you think that I need to be extra cautious and make my circle a little teeny tiny like that? Yes. No, we need somewhere in between, okay? So right up here, somewhere in the middle of my paper. Look here, buddy. Um, yeah, that would work. You could even make it a little bit bigger if you wanted, okay? Or if you have a circle laying around the house and you want to trace something like a bowl or a roll of tape or something like that, be my guest. Anything oh, works. Oh, like you could use a... Like, what are your tools and cut out a cardboard circle? You could, yeah, you could make a stencil that, but we're gonna draw it freehand because we want ours to be a little interesting and unique, and it's okay if there's those little imperfections in our artwork. So here we go, ready? I'm gonna make a circle yeah. about that big, right there in the middle of my paper. Your turn, buddy, go ahead and do your best. Excellent job, excellent job. Okay, now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to draw our petals, but there's a trick. I want you to wait and I want you to watch what I do, okay? All right, so I decided I like these petals right here, okay? Maybe you wanna do ones that are more simple and more flowing, that's up to you, all right? So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm just gonna start to draw these one petal at a time right next to each other all the way around my flower. Don't start drawing yet, just watch, okay buddy? Just watch. Now, when you draw something like this, a flower, that's what's called a radial design or pattern, meaning it all goes around a circle. That's what radial means, kind of like the spokes on a bike wheel going out from the center. Um, it can be a little tricky when you start getting around to the sides to keep everything nice and neat and orderly. So I tell my students this, this is a trick and you can do this too, it helps when you draw your petals, if you turn your paper, and if you make a mistake, you can erase, or you can just let it go if you don't have any eraser. Sometimes that's just the way it works. We have those sort of 
as they call them, happy little accidents, and it doesn't always work out exactly the way we want it. All of my petals are a little bit different, but I'm gonna add another layer here in a second. So there, I made my way all the way around the flower one time, okay? And I'm gonna let you go ahead and start doing that with yours. All right, buddy? Do your best. Oh, those are very wavy petals. Looks like fire. Now remember, you wanna make them wide enough that you can paint, okay? So maybe your next one, instead of doing it super skinny like that, Maybe you can make it wavy, but make it a little bit wider so you have more space to paint it, to paint it in or to color it in, okay? <laughs> Keep going, you gotta go all the way around. Good job turning your paper, buddy. All right, so while he's working on that, I'm just gonna talk about the supplies that I have here. You keep working, buddy, I'll watch you, okay? Um, we got watercolors here. These are just standard old Crayola washable watercolors. These are what Johnny's gonna use. Um, I did make a quick run to Michael yesterday in preparation for this. I already had the oil pastels unopened. I already had the paint brushes, but I didn't have um, any more of like a nice set of praying watercolors. I got these. These were a little bit more on the pricey side, but as we all know, if you go to Michael's, uh, you can use coupon and get stuff for 40% off. And I know we're all kind of trying to stay hunkered down in our houses right now um, and avoid other people to prevent, you know, spreading things around, but you could go get these at Michael's. There wasn't anybody there or just use what you have at home. It's your choice. I don't want to tell anybody they need to go out and buy stuff if they don't need to. Good job, buddy. It's a very interesting flower. Ooh, that's a big petal. Try to keep them all about the same size, okay? Keep going, right there. You gonna be able to color those in when it's time? Yes. All right. Remember what I said about making them big, okay? Mm -hmm. Good job, keep going. Excellent work, good job. Ooh, that one's really big. All right, I think you got room for one, maybe two more, and then we're gonna be ready to move on to the next step. Two. Two, okay. Maybe three. Maybe three. I don't think we can fit three in there. Let's see what it looks like after this one. Okay, do one more. Ooh, you got a little crazy with the lines there. All right. So, That's because I didn't have enough room. Think you're gonna be able to turn this into a flower? Yeah. Okay, all right, so if it needs to be a flower, what else is missing? The inside of it. Well, I'm not worried about the inside. I know our picture just has the flower, but do flowers magically float in midair like that or do they grow up out of the ground? Grow up out of the they ground. They grow up out of the ground, and what are they attached to? A stem, and we're gonna make two lines for our stem, not just one, because you can't color in a line. So I'm gonna make one line that comes down like that, and then another line that comes down like that for my stem. Might even give it a leaf or two down here, just for good measure, why not? Let me see. All right, make it go all the way to the bottom of the paper. Good job. Can buddy. I like cut along the top of it to like make the dog? We'll color over top of it with something next, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so now that that is done, the drawing part is done. Here we go, part two. We have discovered what kind of petals we want, and now we're gonna move on to our actual artwork. Now we have really big paper here, okay? Um, you know, as an art teacher, I have a lot of art supplies laying around the house. Um, so I'm able to use this stuff. You don't have to have big, thick paper like this. If you're using watercolors, it's preferable. 
Um, if you don't have watercolors, any kind of just thin notebook paper or printer paper will do. Even if you don't have something like this, just find something that's got something on the other side and you can draw on the back of it. Um, any, anything that's paper that's blank will work. No matter how big or how small, you could do this on a postcard if you wanted to and just make little tiny ones. Yes. Now, but we're working big. So here's Johnny's paper, all right? He's got his flower petal practice sheet right there, all right? And I've got my paper here, okay? Let's set that over there. You got your pencil? Yeah. Okay, now you're gonna need to work with me because this is gonna kind of be drawing like a team here, all right? I'm gonna show you what we're gonna start out with. We're not gonna do our petals right off the bat because the very first thing we need to draw on our paper a is a circle, exactly. Two now, circles. Just, we're gonna do just one circle to start off, okay? Just one circle, buddy. But we don't want this circle to be really tiny. We have this great big paper, okay? Don't draw small. You have all this space. We're making one flower on this paper, so we need to fill it up. Now, do you think that means that I need to make my circle so big that it takes up the whole entire paper? No. No, uh-uh. Do you think that I need to be extra cautious and make my circle a little teeny tiny like that? No. No, we need somewhere in between, okay? So right up here, somewhere in the middle of my paper. Okay. Look here, buddy. Um, yeah, that would work. You could even make it a little bit bigger if you wanted, okay? Or if you have a circle laying around the house and you wanna trace something like a bowl or a roll of tape or something like that, be my guest, anything oh, works. Life. You could use a, like, one of your tools and cut out a cardboard circle. You could, yeah, you could make a stencil of that. But we're going to draw it freehand because we want ours to be a little interesting and unique. And it's okay if there's those little imperfections in our artwork. So here we go. Ready? I'm going to make a circle okay. about that big right there in the middle of my paper. Your turn, buddy. Go ahead and do your best. Excellent job, excellent job. Okay, now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to draw our petals, but there's a trick. I want you to wait, and I want you to watch what I do, okay? All right, so I decided I like these petals right here, okay? Maybe you wanna do ones that are more simple and more flowing, that's up to you, all right? So I'm gonna take my pencil, and I'm just gonna start to draw these one petal at a time, right next to each other, all the way around my flower. Don't start drawing yet, just watch, okay buddy? Just watch. Now, when you draw something like this, a flower, that's what's called a radial design or pattern, meaning it all goes around a circle. That's what radial means, kind of like the spokes on a bike wheel going out from the center. Um, it can be a little tricky when you start getting around to the sides to keep everything nice and neat and orderly. So I tell my students this, this is a trick and you can do this too. It helps when you draw your petals, if you turn your paper, and if you make a mistake, you can erase or you can just let it go if you don't have an eraser. Sometimes that's just the way it works. We have those sort of, as they call them, happy little accidents and it doesn't always work out exactly the way we want it. All of my petals are a little bit different, but I'm gonna add another layer here in a second. So there, I made my way all the way around the flower one time, okay? And I'm gonna let you go ahead and start doing that with yours, all right, buddy? Do your best. Oh, those are very wavy petals. Looks like fire. Now remember, you want to make them wide enough that you can paint, okay? Mm -hmm. So maybe your next one, instead of doing it super skinny like that, maybe you can make it wavy, but make it a little bit wider so you have more space to paint it, to paint it in or to color it in, okay? Okay. <laughs> Keep going. You gotta go all the way around. Good job turning your paper, buddy. All right. So while he's working on that, I'm just gonna talk about the supplies that I have here. You keep working, buddy. I'll watch you, okay? Um, we got watercolors here. These are just standard old Crayola washable watercolors. These are what Johnny's gonna use. 
Um, I did make a quick run to Michael's yesterday in preparation for this. I already had the oil pastels unopened. I already had the paint brushes, but I didn't have um, any more of like a nice set of praying water colors. I got these. These are a little bit more on the pricey side, but as we all know, you go to Michael's, uh, you can use coupon and get stuff for 40% off. And I know we're all kind of trying to stay hunkered down in our houses right now um, and avoid other people to prevent, you know, spreading things around. But you could go get these at Michael's. There wasn't anybody there or just use what you have at home. It's your choice. I don't want to tell anybody they need to go out and buy stuff if they don't need to. Good job, buddy. It's a very interesting flower. Ooh, that's a big petal. Try to keep them all about the same size, okay? Keep going, right there. You gonna be able to color those in when it's time? Yes. All right. Remember what I said about making them big, okay? Mm -hmm. Good job, keep going. Excellent work, good job. Ooh, that one's really big. All right, I think you got room for one, maybe two more, and then we're gonna be ready to move on to the next step. Two. Two, okay. Maybe three. Maybe three. I don't think we can fit three in there. Let's see what it looks like after this one. Okay, do one more. Ooh, got a little crazy with our lines there. All right, so. That's because I didn't have enough wheels. Think you're gonna be able to turn this into a flower? Yeah. Okay, all right, so if it needs to be a flower, what else is missing? Well, I'm not worried about the inside. I know our picture just has the flower, but do flowers magically float in midair like that or do they grow up out of the ground? Grow up out of the they ground. They grow up out of the ground and what are they attached to? A stem. And we're gonna make two lines for our stem, not just one, because you can't color in a line. So I'm gonna make one line that comes down like that, and then another line that comes down like that for my stem. Might even give it a leaf or two down here, just for good measure, why not? Know. Let me see. All right, they go all the way to the bottom of the paper. Good job. Can buddy. I like color over top of it to like make the dog? We'll color over top of it with something next, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so now that that is done, the drawing. So now that the drawing part is done, now we're gonna move on to adding color. And for color, we're gonna use oil pastels. We are gonna use watercolors too, but we'll do that later on. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So now I'm gonna take my oil pastels. Can I have this? Yes. Okay, because we're not gonna need that anymore. And we're going to start to color. Now, you've used oil pastels before, yes. okay? Um, my kids have used oil pastels before like, if you uh, have them at home like at school. Like five years ago. Yeah, like you were you were born five years ago. What the heck? <laughs> so you mean to tell me you used oil pastels when you were a little tiny baby? <laughs> I don't think so. It was when I was five. Yeah. It was the day that I turned five. It was the day you turned five. Yes. We used oil pastels on your birthday. Yes. You remember this yes. explicitly. Yes. Okay, good to know. I don't. All right, so here we go, sunflower. Most sunflowers are gonna be a combination of yellows and oranges and reds. Don't steal all those, hang on a second, okay? But they don't have to be. Maybe you don't have anything. Maybe you just have an old box of crayons that is missing all the colors and your sunflower is from an alien planet and on that planet, sunflowers grow to be neon green, or they grow to be pink, or whatever color you want it to be. It, it just grows in air because yeah. space has no gravity. Okay, yes, that's true. Space has no gravity. Okay, so I'm going to start making mine yellow. What color are you going to make yours, buddy? Um, red. You want to do red? I'm going to make mine a rose. Okay, all right. So, well, remember, it's a sunflower, but we can call it, we can make it up. It can be called the rose sunflower. Yeah. Okay. All right, so watch me. All right, don't start doing anything yet. I'm gonna start off very carefully, just going around and I'm just coloring in my petals, one at a time. If you have oil pastels, you can use those. If you have crayons, use those. If you have colored pencils, use those, okay? 
Johnny, you can go ahead and start. I like to trace mine ahead of time, so let me show you what that looks like. Okay? I already know how to trace. Okay, well, I'll just do one and then you can do the rest, all right? Tracing them, especially if you have really light lines, it helps us see where everything is. And then we're gonna try our best to stay nice and neat inside of those lines that we made. If we go outside the lines, it doesn't mean we need to throw it in the trash and start over. You can fill it in with something else, turn it into something else, make it look a little nice. Yeah. All right, go ahead and start coloring them in, buddy. I'm gonna do the other side. Okay. As you guys saw in the time-lapse video, we got our work done. Just to kind of go back and talk about what I did, because I know I kind of skipped some steps here. Um, after we got done with the petals, I decided to go around mine with a slightly darker um, yellow-orange just to outline my pastels. If you uh, are an older student or an adult that's doing this with your kid and you want to put more detail into it, by all means, put as much detail into it as you want or you can keep it very simple, okay? Um, after I had that done, I used brown and black to fill in the center of my sunflower, so did Johnny, and then we each used uh, green to do the stem again. Seafoam green. He's got like a seafoam green stem, mine's more of a normal green stem. It's your choice, whatever you want it to look like, uh, it's your option, okay? Um, so now I'm done with my pastels, for now at least. We might come back to those later with the black to do some tracing. Daddy. But right now, I'm not going to worry about it. There's actually a sea so sea foam green mogul. Oh, there is? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're yeah, not using it today. All right. So now, we're moving on to watercolors. Have you ever used watercolors before? Yes, I yes, use them like all the time. Okay. I've got a big tray of watercolors. Johnny's got a little tray of Crayola washable watercolors. Um, really, most watercolors, if they're in a pan like this, should be pretty washable. So you shouldn't have to worry about wearing smocks and stuff like that. But if you're the more neat type and you don't want to get messy, by all means, get an old shirt and put it on. Okay. It is dry right now, but we have to wake it up. Okay, so if you've never Pretty used warm. watercolors before, which would not be any of my students, hang on a minute. Um, my kids always use watercolors plenty. Um, if you have it though, you need to remember, it is water, paint, paper at first to get these going. You have to wake the watercolors up because they're all dried up and they're kind of sleepy, okay? Now we've got some different size brushes here. I've got this great big brush that I might let Johnny use um, so it doesn't take him too long to get his background done. I'm gonna be using just kind of some standard, you know, all-purpose brushes here for mine. Um, so wait a second, buddy. You need to watch and wait for the directions, okay? So now I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna dip it in the water, all right? I'm gonna come to my paper here. I've got all these different shades of blue. I'm gonna start with this one right here. Um, if you want to add more details to this with pastels, you know, draw butterflies or things around your flower, add grass at the bottom, all that's an option. I'm going to keep mine as it is. So I go water, paint, just to kind of wake those colors up, and then I go to my paper. And I'm going to start carefully painting this in. Now, if you are out there doing this and you have crayons, hang on, you need to watch. If you have crayons or if you have oil pastels that you did this with um, and you colored them in really well, uh, you're kind of in a unique position because you get to see what happens when we do an oil pastel or a crayon resist. And what that means is, is I don't have to worry about my colors, for the most part, getting covered up by my watercolors because the oil from the pastels or the wax from the crayons resists water and it won't be covered up by it. Now that doesn't mean that you can just take your brush and you can just paint all over the whole thing and hope that it magically turns out. We still want to kind of carefully work around our petals here a little bit. And um, it's okay if you like make accidents and put it inside of the flower petals. It is okay if you make accidents. Mm -hmm. Yes, buddy. That's a very good thing to say. Thanks for adding that in. What color are you going to paint yours? 
um, like, kind of a reddish, red. A reddish red? Yeah. Okay, now, one important thing, especially to the younger ones out there, a lot of times when we start using watercolors, our natural reaction or what we want to do, sometimes without even realizing is we just start dipping our brush in all of our colors. And we just start using all the colors at the same time. Um, Johnny, do you know what happens if you mix all the colors together? Specifically, if you start mixing like all the primary colors wow. together, it's gonna turn brown, yes. So if you wanna keep a nice colorful background, I recommend picking a couple colors that work well together. If you don't know what works well together, um, you can get online, you can look at some pictures of the color wheel, um, nice. kind of see what colors work well. Like red but and blue. Exactly, so since I'm using blue, um, something like red would be great to go with it, a different shade of red, greens would be okay, yellows would be okay. What yellow we and blue want, make no, yellow and blue make green. green. Good job. And, um, um, blue and green make orange. No. Uh, no. Yellow and red. Yes, yellow and red. Good job. Make orange. Okay. All right. So I'm almost done here. You can go ahead and start painting, buddy. Yes. Remember, water, paint, paper. Okay. Now you have that great big thick brush. Okay. So when you use it. You want to kind of just tap it in there and swish it around and wake that paint up, okay? And then go to your paper and start painting it in. Ooh. Okay? That's a pretty one. Yeah. It's kind of like... It's, it's going to look pink. And do you know why it's going to look pink? Because it's... The white paper is white and the, and the paint is red. And what two colors mix to make pink? Red and white, right? Yeah. So if you take red watercolors and paint them very lightly, on paper, that's probably gonna be. It's gross. gonna look pink. No, it's not gonna look gross. It's just gonna look pink. Daddy. Yeah. I mean, like when we mix pink and. Oh yeah, the water's gonna change all sorts of colors. There's nothing we can. Like do it's gonna that. be zombie color. Yeah. Now, if you're using your watercolors and you start to notice that they're starting to form a puddle in here, you might notice I'm not even dipping my brush back in the water because I don't want to make these too wet and saturated. So I'm kind of soaking up that extra water this I have in there. Like the other thing is, a lot of our littles like to do this. Um, we want to paint in the same place on our paper over and over and over again. And that's never something that you want to do. If you start to notice little bumps popping up on your paper or something like that. That's bad. Yeah, that means you're wearing through that paper. And especially since we're kind of in the situation we're in, we might not have nice thick watercolor paper to use. Um, you gotta be careful. We're not even using watercolor paper. This is just kind of like mixed purpose paper. It's actually the same exact paper I use with the students at school for a lot of the things that we do. Um, kind of a multi-purpose art one, paper. This one is the same color as the oil pastel. It is. That's right. It is the same color. All right. Well, I've about got mine wrapped up, but I'm going to add some more details. So we're going to switch this over to time-lapse mode. And if you're at home and you didn't have watercolors, this is the time where you can just start coloring in the background with oil pastels or colored pencils or crayons or whatever you have um, just to finish this up and, and give yourself some creative time. So switch into the time-lapse and then we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We're done with our sunflowers. Um, Johnny, what colors did you use? I used seafoam green, red, blue, some yellow, which was actually orange. Yeah. And some red. 
Okay. With some purple and blue and some rainbow and a zombie color, I think. A zombie color, okay. Now, if you're all done with this and maybe you're worried because you can't see some of your lines and stuff like that, um, when this is all dry, or you could do it before you paint too, even if you want, I know it's a little late for that. Um, there's no reason why you can't go around and retrace around your petals and your stem and things like that with something like a Sharpie um, or a black crayon, a black colored pencil, a black oil pastel. <clears throat> it's all up to you. Um, but we're gonna leave ours like this for now. Johnny might do some black outline on his later, um, but that's it for today. Um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'll make some more and maybe we can do one of these every week. Um, this isn't something well, that, every day. I don't know about every day, buddy. <laughs> um, but we can keep this going um, so that, you know, when you have your time during the week to do creative stuff, yeah, <laughs> this is something that, that you can do. The kids at school normally only get art once a week for 45 minutes, but we can take this as a unique opportunity to give them uh, more time than that to draw and to paint and, and to use that part of their brain. Um, so yeah, that's it from Mr. Vance's basement. Say bye, Johnny. Bye. Lena, I don't know if they can see you. Bye. <laughs>